Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Hi everybody. My name is Magali Girard. I'm the uh, executive director of the KIX. Uh, bonjour à tous. Magali Girard, directrice générale du SIX. Uh, la présentation d'aujourd'hui va avoir lieu en anglais, mais la version française a été uh, présentée la semaine dernière et sera uh, prochainement disponible sur notre chaîne YouTube et notre site web. Donc, uh, je vous invite uh, à aller uh, voir prochainement. Ce sera uh, disponible bientôt. So today's uh, presentation will be in English and it will be uh, presented, uh, we will be presented two surveys from Statistics Canada on COVID-19. So it is uh, my pleasure to welcome Isabelle Lévesque and Bruno Lafontaine. Both are from the Center for Population Health Data at Statistics Canada and each will be presenting a survey on COVID-19. So Bruno will be presenting First, I believe, if we do as uh, last week, uh, the impacts of COVID-19 on healthcare workers. Um, and uh, Isabelle will be presenting a survey on COVID-19 and mental health. So the way we uh, work is that uh, both presentations will be uh, uh, given at first, and then we will have a Q&A section after uh, the presentations. So if during the presentations you have questions, I'll uh, invite you to use the chat or the Q&A section of, uh, of Zoom, or you can wait uh, for the Q&A uh, period. Oh, someone cannot hear. It seems that two, uh, two persons cannot hear us. Um, All right. I'm, I'm just wondering uh, if somebody is able to hear us, can you please just reply and say yes? Good, good. Oh, okay, so it works for someone. Um, okay, so as I said, um, you can use the chat or the Q&A section for your uh, questions, or you can wait uh, for the Q&A period of the presentation. Um, yes, and someone is asking, Uh, just saying that to remind everybody that uh, that uh, the our all of our uh, midi web, uh, webinar start at noon 15 and not noon and it lasts until one and to remind everybody as well uh, this uh, presentation is being recorded and will be available on our youtube channel and our uh, website uh, soon i'd say Um, so yes, so just to, uh, uh, so we will start with Bruno. Bruno is, uh, uh, works at the Center for Population Health Data at StatScan, and he is uh, responsible for a new team on access to healthcare and patient experience. And after we will have a presentation by Isabelle, and Isabelle is a manager for, uh, uh, responsible for projects related to mental health and substance abuse. Uh, in the Center for Population Health Data. So, uh, Bruno, your turn. Merci beaucoup. Just give me an extra second. And just before I start, um, est-ce que quelqu'un pourrait only confirm that you are seeing my screen properly? Oui. Oui, OK, parfait, super. OK. Excellent. Alors, um, so uh, welcome everybody. And uh, I was all all already introduced. So I'm Bruno Lafontaine. I'm here for the Center for Population Health Data from Statistic Canada. It's a pleasure and it's an honor to be, uh, to be here with you today. Uh, I'll present on the impacts of COVID-19 on healthcare workers. Um, more precisely on infection prevention and uh, control. So the acronym for this crowdsource initiative is ICHCWIPC. 
Um, for an efficiency, I will always refer moving on uh, to our initiative or the crowdsourcing. Um, in this presentation, I'll talk about why we created the crowdsource initiative uh, uh, on the impact of the COVID uh, for, for the healthcare during the pandemic. I'll give some background information on the development of the crowdsource initiative. I'll explain what a crowdsource collection is since it is rel relatively um, a new collection tool used here at Statistic Statistics Canada. And I'll uh, finish with some details about the methodology and results of our initiative. Um, first, the background information. Uh, as you know, two years ago, unfortunately, uh, COVID-19 hit our healthcare system. Uh, our organization has tried to react timely by developing the following project with our partners, ma mainly the R Health Canada, uh, the Public Health Agency of Canada, and uh, the Canadian Institute of Health Information. We also collaborate with uh, many other uh, stakeholders and partners, but mainly uh, we work in close collaboration with these, these other organizations on the four uh, current projects. Well, the project that I'm going to talk about today, obviously, uh, it was released on February 2nd, 2021. But in addition, uh, we also released another one on September 16th uh, on the Nursing and Residential Care Facility Survey. The release of the survey on access to healthcare and pharmaceutical drugs during the pandemic was uh, released on November 23rd, 2021. And finally, if everything uh, goes as we planned, we will be in a position to release uh, next month, by a little bit more than next month, June 3rd, uh, the survey on healthcare workers' experience uh, during the pandemic. The purpose of this crowdsource initiative was to understand how the pandemic affected healthcare workers, particularly with access to personal protective equipment, or we may refer to PPE moving forward, and infection prevention and control measures in the workplace since this was such an issue at the start of the pandemic. A crowdsource collection it's a non-probabilistic method of collecting data by inviting all members of a target population to voluntarily participate in a data collection exercise on a topic of interest. Statistics Canada uh, is able to recognize that it's not the traditional uh, tools that it was used by our organization. That being said, this can make the development process shorter, allowing for more timely data. And keeping in mind that in the pandemic context, there was an, under, an urgency to act quickly and obtain data on the current situation. For all these reasons, the crowdsource method was favorable. Key points of the crowdsource is that the finding only represent the participation and not the population. They cannot be generalized to the entire Canadian population since there is no sampling or weighting. We have participants instead of respondents, and we produce results rather than estimates. We use benchmark factor rather than weights. Uh, benchmarking use controlled totals to adjust the proportions of participants based on the number of participants. The sum will, will still be the number of participants. And for this initiative, we control the totals because we obtain, uh, we obtain numbers from the census 2016's uh, occupations by provinces or territories. In comparison, in weighting the sum would be the population of interest. Benchmarking can compensate for the over or under representation of participants. In consultation with methodology, based on the size of the population, the target number of participants was set as 20,000. We obtained a participation rate just over 18,000. Anyone in Canada could participate. The questionnaire of approximately 45 questions for a total of 12 minutes was only available electronically through a website. The targeted participants 
where the healthcare workers and those working in a healthcare setting living in the 10 provinces and three territories. This includes people who provided healthcare services directly to individuals, but also provided technical support to medical staff, or who provided support services in the healthcare settings. Donc, uh, all doctors, nurses, and personal support worker were included. But we, we were not only interested in health professionals, but also students working in healthcare fields. Uh, keep in mind that we send a lot of students directly on the field when the pandemic starts. In addition, we have in mind some cleaners, uh, some cooks, some security personnel. Uh, in summary, everybody was involved uh, in a healthcare system. All the uh, all the all these professionals, not healthcare uh, professionals, are qualified or classified, sorry, uh, as other uh, in our survey, like the, in the other category. Crowd sources and surveys have different framework. With our crowd source, we employed a snowball sampling method. This is used to increase participation where participants are recruited from uh, colleagues, uh, professional work organizations, uh, professional colleges, uh, friends, acquaintances. Uh, an introduction letter and reminders were sent to individuals on the list of organizations and contact of Statistics Canada. They were encouraged to promote the crowdsource into their organizations, colleagues, etc. The content was developed in consultation with our partner. The voluntary questionnaire included questions related to the type of employment and the workplace, the training received for infection prevention and control, and the training received for personal protective equipment protocols. Uh, access and usage of personal protective equipment, personal and mental health. It also included general sociodemographic questions. Statistics Canada reviewed the data to increase the quality of our findings and try to control for different factors. Uh, as an example, uh, postal codes were verified to ensure they were valid. Uh, records that were outside of the target, uh, target age that for that specific initiative was of 15 years old and older, they were removed. Records of participants who reported starting working at a young age were examined. Uh, in SQL, the results were compared to other sources whenever possible. With crowdsourcing, no data quality sourcings are produced, as, as an example, coefficient of variations, uh, confidence intervals, and margins of errors. Regarding the benchmarking, uh, the benchmarking, uh, we use benchmarking instead of weighting. As I mentioned previously, we use the data from the census 2016 to calculate benchmarking factors uh, for different health professionals in each provinces and territories. Benchmark by province and occupation uh, uh, as grouped in questionnaires. Um, some collapsing of occupation had to be done due to the low number of participants. Um, and we did it for uh, some territories. So the Yukon, the Northwest Territories and the Nunavut were merged uh, into one single region. The standard, standardization process it was the sum of the factors total the numbers of participants and yields the same results for proportion in the provinces, preserve the distribution of control totals, and prevent misleading estimates of totals. Regarding the methodological considerations, the snowball sampling may lead to bias and we recognize it. Differences can be seen in participant by gender, geography, and occupation. For example, some professional organizations promote the crowdsource to their member, which may have resulted in higher participants for these health professionals. It's important to mention that in crowdsource, no counts can be published, only percentage, and no zero or 100%.
we have vetting guidelines established by our methodology team for crowdsourcing. The numerator should have at least 10 participants in any time. Regarding the denominator, should have at least 30 participants. As I mentioned previously, no counts. Rounding of percentages, and we cannot publish proportion of zero and 100 percent. Regarding our products, several master files are available, and an, an article in the daily has been published. If you're not aware, the daily is a, it's like a website uh, that we are using at Statistics Canada to, uh, to share our findings uh, with the, the Canadian in general. So the audience, it's not an education or institutional field, uh, but the, the Canadian in general. So uh, an article is available on the daily uh, to share our finding. The following slides present the results published in the daily articles. Um, mainly that one, this chart demonstrates demonstrates the self-reporting mental health of participation, participating healthcare workers. I lost my pointer. Just give me a second. Okay, good. So 70% of participating healthcare workers reported uh, that their mental health was worse or much worse at the time of participation compared to March, 2020. Just to remind you that the participation occurred uh, between November 24th and December 13, 2020. If we uh, disaggregate these data and we are doing a breakdown by type of professions, we may observe that, uh, that 70, 3% of physicians reported that their mental health was worse or much worse. In comparison, 75% for the nurse, 63% of personal support workers or K-hairs. It was really interesting here to note that there's the lowest number for personal support workers than in comparison of nurses and physicians. 69% of other health professionals, as an example, it may be dentists, uh, pharmacists, etc., and other occupations. Remember, when I introduce other uh, occupations, I have in mind students, uh, cookers, security personnel, uh, cleaners, etc. This chart demonstrates the self-reported stress level of participating healthcare worker. 44% of participants who did not contact, who, 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 sorry, 44% of participants with no direct contact with suspected or confirmed cases of COVID-19 at their jobs reported that their day were quite a bit or extreme, extremely stressful. With the people with no direct contact, we may explain it by people who are doing some administrative duties in a desk or some health professionals uh, conducting virtual care through a computer or phone consultation. Then 53% of the participant uh, with direct contact only with those not suspected of COVID-19 and their jobs reported that their days were quite a bit or extremely stressful. So what's really interesting here is it's, you will see that there's a trend. Without any contact, people are stressed with the 44%. People who are on the floor, but not in contact with direct cases of COVID, we are at 53 and we are at 63% of participants which direct contact with suspected or confirmed case of COVID-19. So we can see the thread right here. Sorry, so the number will be 56% for uh, all, all the healthcare worker together. So I'm not sure if that information here 
Right. Yes, it's an, it's really interesting, but I'm not convinced that the health authority may uh, may really control uh, that factor because uh, we will we will always need some health professionals to uh, take care of the people with the COVID nineteen um, on, on the floor and different in, in different hospitals or clinics uh, setting. That being said. Uh, the healthcare authorities may be aware that these health professionals are facing uh, more challenges on their day-to-day -day basis. This chart here demonstrates the mental health uh, status and stress outcomes of participating healthcare workers with and without restriction in supply of personal protective e equipment. So for the no restrictions, it's a light blue and people with restrictions to PPI, PPE, sorry, it's in darker blue. Okay, in the month previous to the crowdsource initiative. So healthcare worker signing no restrictions or conditions on the supply of PPE reported better mental health and stress outcomes than participants who experienced restrictions or conditions. If we disaggregate these data, we may notice that, um, People, 39% uh, 39, 30, of participating, participating healthcare workers without restrictions uh, in their supply of PPE reported that their mental health was excellent or really good compared to 27. So these folks here, they're doing well. We have a bigger number for people who have access to PPI without restrictions. There's no difference for good mental health. Okay, we're looking at 34 and 33. But for the next one, you will see that there's a difference. So 27% of participating healthcare workers without restrictions in their supply of PPE reported that their mental health was fair or poor compared to 40. Same thing here, 63% of participating Healthcare workers without restriction in their supply of PPE reported that their mental health has worsened compared to 77% of the care uh, of the healthcare workers with restrictions. On the same note, for the health professional, 49% uh, for the one without restriction in supply of PPE reported that most they were quite a bit or extremely stressful compared to 63% of participants who had restrictions on their supply of PPE. These findings may guide uh, the, uh, the health authorities to handle uh, future similar situation. Um, uh, as we can see, uh, I think these findings uh, outline that uh, more you have access to a PPE, less stressful and better was your mental health. At the opposite, when you have no risk, no PPE or some restrictions, you were like the health professionals were more anxious and stressful. We need to keep in mind that when the strategy, the, the pandemic started, uh, it's not all uh, all the institutions that have access to PPE, or some of them needs to apply restrictions. And voilà, c'est tout. Ça fait le tour. I hope it was, it was useful. Uh, for more information, uh, you have our, uh, our email address here. Do not hesitate to reach us. Uh, we have a couple, couple of files that we may share. We have the daily, and we have an entire team available to provide you with some support. Thanks. Escomber, do we want to go directly to your questions or continue with Isabel? I would continue with Isabel. Okay. Because I don't see any pressing uh, questions on the chat or Q&A. Oh, sorry. So I was not in a position to see chat or, or Q&A during my presentation. So, okay. Hi, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Est-ce que vous voyez ma présentation? Oui, c'est bon. Oui, on voit, on voit super bien, Isabelle. Ça fonctionne okay, bien. Merci. Super. Merci. 
Uh, okay, so I'm um, very pleased uh, to uh, present uh, some information related to uh, the survey on COVID-19 and mental health um, conducted by uh, Statistics uh, Canada. Um, okay. So I'm going to go uh, briefly um, uh, talk about uh, the objective of the survey and then um, go through the survey methodology. I'm going to talk a little bit about the questions uh, that were uh, on the questionnaire uh, for the survey. Um, I'm going to touch a little bit on the screening tools that were used to uh, assess the mental health um, of the individuals. Um, I'm going to touch a little bit on data quality, uh, talk about uh, some data sources and the projects uh, that we did uh, for this survey. So the purpose of the survey on COVID-19 and mental health is to collect data to assess the impacts of COVID-19 on the mental health and well-being of Canadians. So we all know that the pandemic has uh, significantly altered our daily lives. And uh, we built this survey to gather information um, uh, on mental health and well-being of Canadians so that we can better understand what uh, impact the pandemic um, uh, had on our lives. So like I said earlier, the, the surveys were conducted by Statistics Canada uh, in collaboration with the Public Health Agency of Canada. And there were two cycles conducted for this survey. The first one was uh, collected uh, from September to December 2020. And the second cycle was collected from February to April 2021. So the survey was a voluntary survey and it uh, aimed to collect data for uh, adults living in the 10 Canadian provinces and the territorial capital. Um, it was a two-stage design, so a probabilistic survey. So we first uh, randomly selected dwellings within each uh, Canadian province and territorial capital. And then within each dwelling, we randomly selected uh, an individual. We collected the data using uh, an electronic questionnaire that was available online for respondents to complete, or using a telephone, um, which, for which the survey was conducted by uh, Statistics uh, Canada trained interviewers with the respondents. So the stratification for this survey was done by province and territorial capital. And in our final data sets, we have a total of about six, um, uh, 16,000 uh, respondents for 2020 and 19,000 respondents for 2021. If we want to conduct uh, or calculate estimates for the surveys and calculate the variance estimation, we need to use uh, our bootstrap sample. So now I'm going to talk about the questions or the content of the questionnaire. Um, so the questionnaire is quite long. It uh, contains some questions uh, related to depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, and suicidal thoughts. And this helps um, measure behaviors and symptoms associated with these mental health uh, disorders. We also add questions on pressure on parents, uh, substance use, household violence, and mental health in general. And of course, um, in all Statistics Canada uh, surveys, we have demographic um, questions such as uh, age, gender, indigenous identity, ethnicity, immigration status, marital status, education, and income. And on top of all of these uh, topics, we also included some surveys 
some um, sorry some questions related to uh, COVID-19. So, for example, um, impact due to the pan pandemic uh, on mental health. So, compared to before the pandemic, how would you rate your mental health now? Uh, we also have questions related to absence from work uh, that is caused that was caused by the pandemic. Uh, thoughts of suicide uh, since the start of the pandemic, um, changes in alcohol consumption or cannabis use and reasons why it changed since the start of the pandemic. So those are uh, some um, general questions that were asked uh, that were related to COVID-19. Um, in our questionnaire, we are we have included questions that are uh, used uh, as part of screening tools to assess mental uh, disorder symptoms. So, for example, I've listed three of them there: um, the PHQ, the GAD, and the PCL. For those that uh, know those tools, so these are common uh, standard tools that are used to assess mental health symptoms. It is very important to, to note that um, the self-reported uh, screening tools are useful to monitor the prevalence of mental health disorder symptoms and probable diagnosis in the population, but they are not a medical diagnosis and does not always indicate that a disorder is present for an individual. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the data quality. So the survey was conducted to uh, produce a good quality data for national estimates, but also for provincial estimates and estimates for the um, uh, territorial capitals. But there are some limitations to, to this. Um, we have excluded from our target population the people living in institutions, collection, collective dwellings, and on reserve. So this is uh, standard to Statistics Canada surveys. And as you have noticed, we have not included uh, the, the individuals living outside of the territorial capitals in the north. So the coverage for the northern territories is limited only to the capital. And because of the nature of the survey, uh, we have some low frequencies in some answer categories. So for example, if you think about uh, domestic violence or uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or alcohol or cannabis problems, those would be typical uh, questions for which uh, we would expect uh, low frequency. It is thus important to follow, follow the directives on confidentiality and data quality when you perform analysis using uh, these uh, data files. Um, and these uh, conditions or rules are always mentioned in uh, our data user uh, guides uh, that are available uh, uh, with the microdata file. One thing that I would like to mention is that uh, the survey um, uh, data file for 2020 can be combined with the data file from 2021 to increase analytical power when you do your analysis. Those two cycles were conducted independently and you can combine the two surveys to increase your sample size when you do your analysis. And this is great to know because it's not always possible to do that. Uh, data sources. So there are other StatCamp surveys that collect information about mental health and COVID-19. So I've list listed three of them here. So one of them is the Canadian Community Health Survey, the CCHS, the annual component. Um, and 
I just want to mention that um, we, although we have several uh, surveys that collect the some uh, similar information, those surveys were built uh, on a in a different context, and thus uh, they have to be used uh, differently or for a different purpose. They all uh, they are all important. Um, so you just want to, uh, to know uh, what other information is collected for each of these surveys so that you choose the best uh, data file when you perform your analysis. Also, if you just search on the internet, you will find uh, many other data sources related to mental health and COVID-19. And it's really up to you to identify the best uh, data source for your analysis. The products that we have um, uh, for the, the, the two cycles of this survey, so we have uh, created a master file um, for each of the cycles that are available uh, in the Federal Research Data Center. And we also have uh, share files, uh, one for 2020 and one for 2021, um, that are um, uh, available to uh, federal departments. And uh, like Bruno mentioned in his presentation, uh, when we uh, release um, information on a survey that is collected by Statistics Canada, we always um, uh, write a short uh, ana uh, analytical um, uh, in and uh, write the, the results or uh, the findings of our survey in our Statistics Canada daily. So for each of the cycle of the survey, we did write uh, a short uh, uh, analysis uh, in our daily. And that's the end of my presentation. So I hope uh, I provided enough information about the survey and I'm sorry I didn't present any uh, results. Uh, but if you look at the, the daily, you will find some interesting results. Thank you. Merci, Isabelle. Merci, Bruno. Um, these are great surveys, and, and thank you for uh, providing us with more details on, on those two surveys. I think they are uh, great uh, opportunities to uh, uh, increase uh, research uh, on COVID-19, the pandemic, and, and their impact on our lives. And so uh, great opportunities for, for research. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat or in uh, the Q&A, but I'll invite uh, anyone who would like to ask a questions to uh, turn on their uh, microphone. Oh, I see one question here, and I'll, I'll start with that one, and then, and then maybe after, if uh, someone wants to uh, turn on the, their microphone and ask directly, uh, that'd be great. So, so I see a question, how can you uh, at all make comparison between groups? So maybe Bruno, you can start. Is it, is it for, uh, for, for, um, for boat initiative presented? It doesn't specify, so. No, so uh, no ma'am, I'm asking to Philippe. So Philippe, could you just please type if, if you refer to uh, healthcare professionals or you refer to um, the mental health survey presented by Isabelle. Or Philippe, could you please just open your mic? Okay, by uh, okay, no, no, no it does worries. not work. Okay. No worries, no worries, Philip. So I can I can briefly just answer and after or the way that I see the question, and then after Isabel, should you wish to jump in? Uh, in our case, for the the impact of COVID on the healthcare workers, pain, we define a specific questions was asked to the health professional to define uh, their roles, responsibility. Um, Okay, thank you. It's, 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 it's for me, Isabelle, you're off the hook for this one. So really, we, we ask a couple of questions. 
uh, to the health professionals, uh, the, their titles, their task, their work environment also. So with these responses, we created some, we can define as category and the main category, especially for the analysis where uh, nurses, doctors, um, PWF, so personal uh, support worker, No, we no, we don't we don't have any statistics validity. Um, I'll just finish with my first explanation, then I will I will I will continue with that one, uh, Philip. Um, and uh, we uh, we also merge also the others uh, into uh, others health professionals. We have in mind uh, pharmacists, dentists, and another category just called others, where people like working in a kind of um, working. Uh, Health profession, uh, healthcare environment, but not directly linked, let's say, with a direct role with patients. Um, as I provide a couple examples, uh, students, a uh, cook, uh, um, cleaners, um, security personnel. So no, uh, we can only present some result with a crowdsourcing. So we cannot do any 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 link, um, statistical link. Um, it's it's only observation that we can report in our finding, and it's it is what I was trying to do when I presented these results uh, to see that we notice uh, a difference, but it was not possible to see that it was statistical statistically different, not at all. I'm, I'm not sure that I understand. Bruno, can you read the question? Yes, I'm, yes, yes, obviously. Yes, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, we, we, um, we need to think about the video. So sorry for that. So Philip asking, uh, like when you said that there's a number, that the number is larger than the other one, it's, it's only the percentage that we found uh, that it's higher uh, or lower. So, and it's why I, uh, I was stating uh, these uh, percentage, but other than that, it's uh, unfortunately impossible with a crowdsource uh, to, to, to provide more, uh, to interpret more, more finding or, or, or to, to give a link or direction to these findings. But it was obvious that we can see a kind of a trend that more you are exposed to patient with COVID, more it have a direct impact on your mental health or your stress level. And the same, let's say, uh, finding was observable uh, with health professional who have access to uh, personal protective equipment in comparison of others who didn't have access to PPI or have access but with limitations. So it means that maybe I need to share it with the colleagues, we need to wash it, or I need to keep it for a week, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Even though you cannot say that, uh, no, I can, no, no, you are right, Philip. I can, by, if I understand properly, I can only state the, the, the percentage that we, uh, we found, and it's, uh, it's uh, a con of the crowdsourcing. Uh, but on the other hand, we were in the middle of the pandemic. By, we were roughly six months after the start of the pandemic, and the, the, there was like an urgency uh, to have data uh, regarding regarding healthcare systems, regarding health uh, health professionals, and it's why that I presented. I think it was the second or the third slide that I presented that that crowdsource was also uh, surrounded by other surveys uh, with a wider scope. And the next one, and it will be quite interesting, Philip. It will be uh, the professional health. Uh, professional health care experience through the pandemic, and it will be released if, uh, lock on wood, everything goes as we plan on June 3rd. So, uh, and I will be more than happy to come and present these results. Mm -hmm. And that one, it will be a real, not, not a real, but uh, let's say that scans traditional survey. Uh, what are questions? Statistical technique may be developed, but they are, they are more complex. Um, Maybe Philip, to be quite honest, I'm not uh, I'm not a methodologist, uh, so so I don't want to 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 provide uh, wrong information to our audience here. But but we have because um, because to be quite honest, initially when statistics kind of look at crowdsourcing, a lot of people were ready to throw uh, throw some rocks to our organization. Um, uh, 
Yes, exactly. For, for, for this type of survey, as you mentioned, yes, yes, I agree. Um, uh, but, but we have established some, uh, some guidelines by our methodologist expert, and I just cite a couple of them during the presentation, but we have, let's say, an internal uh, guideline that we are using. Uh, for these, these kind of initiative I have in mind crowdsourcing. But on the other hand, it's also quite similar of what uh, people in an education setting will do when you recruit some volunteers. It's, it's a crowdsourcing. It's like people are ready to put their hands up and say, hey, I'm interesting. Uh, so so it's, a, it's a non probabilistic uh, choice that, that you are doing. And so, so, so we did the same for that one. I hope fit it that it answer uh, your questions. If you have other questions, please feel free to, uh, to contact us. Um, uh, our generic email address was provided and we'll, we have an entire team that will be there to, to, uh, to answer all your questions. I'm just conscious, uh, I'm just conscious of the time here. Yeah, it's one o'clock, so I think we'll end uh, the discussion now. So, uh, merci beaucoup, Isabelle and Bruno, for your time and, and presentations. And uh, to everybody, thank you for, for being here. Uh, this recording will be made available on uh, our YouTube channel and uh, website. And check out for our more webinars in May. We will have one more present. Well, at confirmed, <laughs> we need to uh, fix a date, but it will be in May. A presentation by Isabel on another survey uh, by StatScan on COVID-19. And this time we'll be on vaccination coverage against COVID-19. So uh, check out our uh, newsletter and website for the specific date, but it's going to be in May. So thank you again, all for both of you for the presentation and have a good afternoon. It was a pleasure. Thanks to you. Merci. Bye. Merci. Bye.